Honestly, just understanding what you can do with the iTerm setup will help you be more productive because if you're doing something that is suboptimal, you'll know that a solution exists for it and you'll want to use that solution. And that is the whole point of this video. What's going on everyone? My name is Suboptimal Engineer and I make videos about tech and productivity. In this video, you won't be getting the nitty gritty details of my entire setup, but I will be going over the three key things that I think are very important to have a productive development environment in the terminal. And those three things are iTerm2, Omizish, and Vim commands. I'm not talking about vim itself i'm talking about having vim commands on the terminal so there's two different things there i am going to ask for one small favor from you guys which is to leave a like for the youtube algorithm it does take me a little bit of time to make these videos so it would really help me and the channel out quite a bit now with that out of the way let's get started so the first thing that you really need is going to be iTerm2. If you're an engineer working at a startup or working at a FANG company, a lot of the time you'll be just given a Mac. Using the basic terminal in Mac is not a good idea. iTerm2 is just a replacement for the basic terminal in Mac and it offers a lot of customizability. So let me show you a little bit of customizability that I've configured. So for me, one thing that's really important on a terminal is going to be the color scheme. So I set up my color scheme with Groovebox and that was just a preset that I configured for myself. Google iTerm color themes, you'll find a website like this where you can see dozens of different color schemes that you can use for your setups. So I'd recommend just picking one and going with that. Additionally, iTerm2 also has a ton of key bindings. It makes it really easy to add key bindings for a lot of different commands. I always have at least two terminals. So the left one is just going to be where I can do stuff like git commands or just traverse through directories. And on the right one is where I start the server. So I work as a full stack engineer. So starting the server on the right side, you can see the server logs. On the left terminal, I always like to do a GST, which is git status or a git diff. In some situations, I have to have multiple terminals open like this. So I have four terminals open. Well, I guess it's four panes in my terminal open. You know, I'll have the server here. Maybe I'll be logging into the server with an SSH here. And, and here I'll be doing something else. I don't know. But, you know, it gets kind of hard to use your mouse to go to all of these situations. So I, I remapped it to command J. And command J goes to the previous pane. Command K goes to the next pane. And say I have this weird setup, right? I'm trying to open a Vim file and it looks like this and I'm like, dang it, what can I do? Well, I set up a specific command to maximize this pane and that command is command control enter. So now that pane is toggled to be the, uh, you know, to be the full screen. And then if I press it again, we go back. If I press it again, we go back. If I press it again, we go back. So basically iTerm2 allows you to do a lot of customizability. As you can see, I even have it transparent. It is basically just a way better terminal on Mac. While iTerm2 allows you to have a really nice terminal setup, you still need to configure what you can do inside of iTerm2. And that's where Omizish oh comes into play. The first thing is this ZSH theme. I use the basic Robbie Russell theme. And if you're in Git, they kind of uh, make it clear that you're on the master branch, or if you're in a different branch, it'll show you which branch you're on. You can add a ton of plugins. I only use three plugins right now. I use git, vim mode, and zsh auto suggestions. So the oh my zish git commands are really helpful. So instead of saying like git status, you can just write gst, and that stands for git status. Instead of typing out git diff, you can just do gd, and that's the git diff. The other one is auto suggestions. So say I open up a brand new terminal. Actually, let's open it up over here. So say I open up a brand new terminal and I want to go to this directory over here, the dot files directory. As soon as I start typing in CD, you'll see that because this was my most common uh, previous search, it kind of just opens that up for me and I can press control space to go to that directory and just press enter. Or I can do a CD and then if I do a dot dot and then as you can see, it kind of just remembers what you put before. So as soon as you start typing in commands, it will try to autofill 
uh, whatever it thinks that you want to go to or whatever directory you want to go to. And so now you understand why you need iterm2 and why you need omizish. But let's think about why you need vim commands on the terminal. So if you have omizish configured, then you can enable vim mode. And when you enable vim mode, uh, you can kind of set it up uh, in this specific vim file. So it basically allows you to run vim commands inside of the terminal. So let's say I wanted to go to this folder, but I accidentally messed up and it's not supposed to be in desktop. How would I do this normally? Well, if I was doing this normally, what I would do is I would go all the way to the left, move my cursor, and then I would do backspace, 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 and then I would change it to applications. So that's how you would do it without vim. It's just a very annoying situation. But say I do have vim enabled, then I'd enter vim mode, back, 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 DIW, desktop, enter. See, it's a lot easier when you have vim commands to just do certain things like editing text. Basically, that's what Vim is good for. It allows you to edit things a lot faster than if you were trying to do it without Vim mode. Let's say I wanted to see my previous commands. I could just press K to go up, J to go down. Basically, Vim on the terminal is just overkill and you need it. If, if you have it, you're gonna like thank yourself later. In conclusion, if you want to be like a really productive god, then use these three things. Set up your iTerm2, use your custom, you know, custom terminal, and make sure you have your omizish configured with the plugins that you want. I use Git, I use Vim mode, and I use ZSH suggestions. And also uh, set up your Vim commands if you are going to use it inside of the iTerm. Yeah, so these are the three things that I really wanted to talk about today, just because I think if you know you can do something, you will figure out a way to do it. But if you don't know what you can do, then you'll never try. So the whole point of this video was to make sure that you guys understood what is possible with your iTerm setup, how productive you can be on a terminal. I'm hoping that once you guys watch this video that you can kind of figure things out on your own because I don't really need to go into the details, you know, I don't need to go into the details of my exact Vim setup because it's for my specific niche. I have specific commands that you might not like. Like I enter Vim with KJ, but some people use JJ, some people use Escape. You know, it's honestly just understanding what you can do with the iTerm setup and how you can be more productive will help you be more productive because you'll know that if you're doing something that is suboptimal, you'll know that a solution exists for it and you'll want to use that solution. And that is like the whole point of this video. Yeah, so that's going to be it uh, for today. Hope you guys enjoyed and learned a little bit about what you can accomplish with your terminal setups. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more in the future. I'll catch you guys next time.